Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the DJ Roscoe Sports Show for this Thirsty Thursday. Uh, what is it now? October 5th, 2023. Come live from my palatial black trolley, as the kids call it, the Nissan Pathfinder. If it's Thursday, I'm listening to Mammoth Sports Talk right here on the DJ Roscoe Sports Show, where I hit the road as we're uh, wait, I'm waiting for my daughter to get out of dance class. But I figured I'd give you my football picks right here. Also, baseball playoffs are underway. All the wild card first round series were sweeps, so there's actually no baseball again uh, until the AL and NLDS division series start up on Saturday, October 7th. But congrats, the Phillies swept the Marlins two games to nothing. They will take on the Atlanta Braves and rematch of the NLDS. The Phillies upset the Braves in last year, but they're big underdogs this year with Ronald Cunha Jr. who's going to be the MVP and the Braves being so good this year. Uh, but the Phillies will play the Braves in Atlanta start on Saturday. Quadruple header, all four uh, division series will start up on Saturday. Um, then the Milwaukee Brewers got knocked out by Dan to tour my buddy Dan's Diamondbacks. First time playoffs in six years since 2017. They uh, they won two games to nothing, came back to beat the Brewers in both games. So it'll be an uh, NL West rivalry matchup. And they faced off, I think, in the NLDS in 2017. Last time Diamondbacks were in the playoffs, it'll be Diamondbacks versus Dodgers. I favored the Dodgers to win that. But Diamondbacks, great run with all their young signed players. Um then the American League, Texas Rangers, even with some of their the injuries, with Jacob DeGrom injured, Max Scherzer out, but he might be ready for the, the ALDS. They knocked off and swept the Tampa Bay Rays on the road in Tampa in both games. So the Texas Rangers, uh, first time in playoffs in seven years since 2016. They will take on the Baltimore Orioles starting Saturday at 1 o'clock at Camden Yards. Beautiful ballpark. I've been there. I, I, I give the advantage to the Orioles, well, even though they're young and experienced with all their top-tier ta- top tier talent that they got over the years of struggling. And now they're finally good and beast the AL East. The only AL East team is still around because the uh, the Tampa Rays got knocked out and the Toronto Blue Jays got knocked out in the first round of the wild card series. I thought the Blue Jays were going to win this. The Minnesota Twins won both games at home at Tar- Tarjay Field, Tarjay Stadium, the Twins' home ballpark. It was their first home. Uh, it was their first playoff win. Playoffs, as Jim Moore would say, in uh, what was it? In 19 years, they hadn't won a playoff game since 2004. I was looking up things that were popular in 2004, Nintendo DS, Sierra's song Goodies with P.D. Pablo. That was the number one song in the country. A long time, they had lost 18 straight playoff games. So if you played the Twins in the playoffs, they didn't make it every year in the week AL Central. Usually you would uh, win that first round series against the Twins. The Yankees beat up on them a lot in that time, but <laughs> they came back. <coughs> 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 <laughs> Royce uh, Lewis had two big home runs in the first game. They won 3-1 to one in Game 1 to break their 18-game lose streak in the playoffs. And then in Game 2, they held on and win 2-0, shut out the big-time Blue Jays' offense, was held silent, only scored one run in the two games. So the uh, Minnesota Twins win their first playoff series, uh, I think since 2002, when they knocked off the Moneyball Oakland Athletics in the ALDS. So now the, uh, the Minnesota Twins, they have a playoff win. And a playoff series win, and they will now be on the road. Carlos Correa against his former team, against the Houston Cheating Astros. The only team in this playoff, the 12-team playoff field, that I don't want to see win another World Series. And they were were defending World Series champions, whether they cheat or not cheat. Who knows if they are anymore. They still find a way to win with all their talent and their their proven ability to win. And they got Justin Verlander back uh, from the New York Mets. So... Of the teams remaining, I'm going to go with the Astros to knock off the Twins in the best of five ALDS. I'll go with that, and then I'll go with that in a sweep in three games. I'll go with the Baltimore Orioles <laughs> to knock off the <laughs> Texas Rangers in four games to go to the ALCS, and I'll have the Baltimore Orioles in the ALCS against the defending champion Astros. The Astros very well could win it again, but I think the Orioles will knock off the Astros in the best of seven ALCS, win that in seven games to uh, with home field advantage to go to their first World Series since they won it last year, uh, last time, 40 years ago in 1983 against the Phillies. And I think they'll face off against the Phillies this time around the World Series 40 years from now because I'm going to go with the Phillies. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid with all the excitement, how crazy the fans are, the pandemonium. All the celebrations, they came so close to winning it all last year, going to the World Series on that Cinderella wildcard run before they fell uh, two games shy of winning the World Series, losing the last three games to the Astros. So I'm going to go with the Phillies to beat the Braves again in the NLDS. I know the Braves have been red hot, so the Braves might be the favorite, probably the best team in baseball. I'll have the Phillies win that in five games over the Braves. 
and then uh, to move the NLCS over oh, the Dodgers beating the Diamondbacks. I'll go with that in a in a four in four games. So it'll be Dodgers and Phillies. I'll go with Phillies beating the Dodgers in six games over the uh, uh, to knock off the Dodgers to win their second straight pennant, National League pennant, and then the Phillies Orioles. I'll go with the Phillies to win the World Series in six games over the Baltimore Orioles and rematch the 1983 World Series 40 years from now. So that's my World Series pick. Phillies of oh, the Baltimore Orioles. Maybe it's wishful thinking, uh, but I think the Phillies, they came so close last year, and now they are they proved themselves. They can win the playoffs. They're not going to sneak up anyone, and the home crowd is ready for it, and they were so excited in those two games against the Marlins, and they really smacked around the Marlins. They, they won 4-1 to one game one, 7-1 to one yesterday after the big... Uh, the big uh, uh, Bryce, uh, Bryson Stott grand slam of the crowd went nuts. Jay Trimalto hit a home run. Schwarber's hitting. Trey Turner has been crushing the ball ever since they gave him that same ovation, turned his whole season around. They outscored them combined 11-2 to in their two-game uh, best of three wildcard series. But I'll give them credit. It's not at least a one-game wildcard. You play 162 games, and it goes out by just like that. You have one bad game, you lose, get knocked out like the Yankees did two years ago when Garrett Cole struggled against the Red Sox. Now at least it's best of three. And can go the distance. I would have loved to have a do or die winner take all game three today, but all four series were sweeps. And I think it'll be a fun rest of the way. So that's the baseball playoffs. I'm going with Phillies over the Orioles in the World Series in six games. Basketball, as the Damian Lillard's with the Bucks now with the Greek freak Giannis. So the Bucks could be the team to beat, but basketball's back. Uh, before you know it, they're opening night starting up pretty soon. Preseason basketball is uh, starting up. NHL hockey preseason's about to be finished up. They start up, I think, on Tuesday. They have like a triple header on ESPN. So NHL regular season hockey is going to be back. Baby Penguins' first home game is Saturday, October 21st at Wilkes Barre uh, Mohegan Sun Arena at Casey Plaza. So hockey's back, basketball back, baseball playoffs as we go to the World Series. And then even though the Yankees haven't been in the playoffs, uh, this is the first time not being in the playoffs in seven years. Still excited to uh, still excited to watch the baseball is because I know even the offseason to know where Otani is going to go and all this stuff. And spring training starts in February. We won't have a game that really matters until the beginning of April. So it'll be about five months uh, once the World Series ends the first week of November. So I'm going to enjoy it while it's the last. So baseball is excited. And then Penn State continues the role. They're still undefeating college football. And the, uh, Notre Dame got a nice, another nice win against a ranked team against Duke in prime time. So Duke, uh, so Notre Dame is doing well. Um, Syracuse lost their first game of the year at home against Clemson in ACC battle. So a lot of exciting stuff. Colorado lost their second game row with primetime Deion Sanders, but almost came back, lost to USC by a touchdown. So we'll see how they bounce back. It's a lot of fun stuff with college football and everything like that. Uh, talk about basketball, hockey, and baseball. And now we go to my week five NFL picks for this starting this Thursday, Thursday, October 5th, 2023. Ah, it's flying right by. Thursday Night Football, 8.15 p.m. on Amazon Prime. The 0-4 Chicago Bears, who stink, against the 2-2 two two Washington Commanders that are a little less stinky. I'm going to go with the Washington Commanders to beat the Bears. The Bears. It's going to be an ugly primetime game, but I will watch it because there's no baseball playoff baseball tonight. Uh, but And it's football, but it's not a good game for primetime. I'm going to go with Washington to beat the Bears 20-13 to to improve the 3-2. and two. The Bears continue to be winless 0-5. And, and maybe uh, with Justin Fields struggling this much and blaming all his teammates and coaches, they'll have his replacement. But they don't want to pick in the NFL draft if they were this bad. And Chase Claypool might want to get traded. Love to him go back to Steelers or another competitor team. And then Sunday, this Sunday, October 8th, we have another London game. Second week in a row for the Jaguars to be uh, in London. Last week they were at home. They beat the Atlanta Falcons to, to even up the regular two and two. This time they're the road team. It's the NFL's Buffalo Bills. Nine thirty a.m. on NFL Network. I saw the uh, the Disney Plus version with the Toy Story things in Andy's room. That was fun because uh, I don't have ESPN Plus. And I want to pay another stream service. So nine thirty a.m. NFL Network. London for the second week in a row. Jaguars two and two versus the Bills who are three and one. Who since losing my Jets in overtime and that Aaron Rodgers first game debacle when he got hurt. Blue Eyes Achilles, they've been red hot. Josh Allen's cut up, down the turnovers, and uh, the Buffalo Bills were able to beat up on the Dolphins, who were beat up on everyone, won the week before against the Stinky Broncos, 70-20, to 20, won by 50 points. They were able to control that uh, Dolphins' uh, bonted offense with uh, Tyreek Hill, the Cheetah, and Tua when he's healthy as a stud, but the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen, they've really rised up since struggling that opening weekend and, and all the turnovers against the, my Jets. IJTS Jets, Jets, Jets haven't won a game since then, even though they came close in prime time with the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey uh, game. There were all the celebrities and Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, Wolverine was there and all that nonsense. But they almost came back on my birthday on Sunday, October 1st, but fell just short. But I'm going to go with the Bills to knock off Dan Torres Jaguars. I think Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars, they get him better, but still inconsistent. I think the Bills, they will be continue to click on offense as long as Josh Allen uh, limits the turnovers. I think the Bills are just a little bit better right now. I'm going to go with the Bills to win... 
<laughs> I'll go with the Bills 30 to 20 over the Jaguars. They win by 10 to prove to 4 and 1. Jaguars fall to 2 and 3. Then there are six early 1 p.m. games on Sunday, October 8th. I'm going to go 1 p.m. on Fox. The Texans, who are playing much better, beat up on the Steelers shockingly last Sunday, which I didn't see coming. Uh, and their rookie correct's doing great. Texans at Falcons. I'm going to go with the Texans to go on the road and continue to win and beat the Falcons and Desmond Ritter, who are mediocre at best. I'm going to go with the Texans over the Falcons. I'm going to go with 23-13. They win by 10. 1 p.m. on Fox. The winless Panthers, who've been struggling big time with their young quarterback, Panthers at the Detroit Lions. The Lions are going to smoke them at home in Detroit. Lions again really hot. Uh, hopefully they don't get too cocky and they, they focus on a bad winless Panthers team. I'm going to go with the Lions to beat up on the Panthers. I'm going to go with 34 to 17. They double up the Panthers by 17. 1 p.m. on CBS. The Titans at the Colts. Titans have been playing much better of late. Colts have that nice overtime win over the Ravens, but then... Uh, Got smacked around the, uh, uh, well, almost came back. The loss to the Rams uh, last week, or improved them better than we thought they were. I'm going to go with the Titans on the road to beat the Colts. It's a close AFC South division rivalry. Uh, Mike Frabel's defense is pretty good. Derrick Henry's uh, running the ball will do a good job. Titans are surprised. They beat up on the Cleveland Browns. They're playing uh, better than I thought. Um, what is it? They beat up on what is it? the Bengals this past week. And Joe Burrow's been struggling since the calf injury. Uh, who knows if he'll be fully back uh, to what he used to be if he's not fully healthy. But the Titans, I think, are getting better. I think the Titans will win an ugly game. I'll go with 20-17. to 17. They win by three over the Colts on the road in Indianapolis. 1 p.m. on Fox, the G-Man, the Giants. New York football Giants, they'd be 0-4 if they didn't come back from 21 points back uh, to beat the Stiggy Arizona Cardinals a few weeks ago. But they got smoked on Monday Night Football by the Seattle Seahawks. Daniel Jones running for his life. Uh, the offense line couldn't protect him and with all their injuries. And when he was thrown, he was throwing interceptions and pick six. Pick sixes, hopefully they get Saquon Barkley back from his ankle injury. But if not, they have no chance. But either way, on the road in a really warm Miami against the Dolphins, who is going to be mad as heck and not going to take it anymore after losing to their division rival, the Bills, in the AFC East last week. Dolphins offense is going to light them up. I don't know if it's going to be 70 points against the Broncos, but the Dolphins, I think, will score a lot. I'm going to go with the Dolphins to win. I'm going to go with 45, 45 to 13. They destroyed the Giants, and the Giants are struggling after they had such a good first year under uh, Brian Dable as head coach. Made the playoffs, won a road playoff game against Kirk Cousins, the Vikings, before losing the Eagles in the second round. And now the Giants really are lucky they're not winless because they came back to beat the Cardinals by a lot, uh, when they were down by a lot because the Giants are terrible and the Dolphins are going to smoke them. 1 p.m. on CBS, we're going to go Saints at the Patriots. I'm going to go with the Patriots here just because I know the Patriots are playing bad. They got the worst loss in Bill Belichick's uh, head coaching career in the NFL by the Cowboys. The Cowboys are a heck of a team. The Patriots won. Their only win they've, this year was an ugly win against my Jets in the rain two weeks ago. But the Saints, Derek Carr is banged up. He's trying to play through the shoulder injury. If Derek Carr and the Saints were healthy, I'd go with the Saints. But I'm going to say the Patriots at home do enough to beat the Saints, even though the Patriots aren't going anywhere. Mac Jones is not the answer at quarterback. And Bill Belichick can't seem to have any answer to do very well without Tom Brady. And I, I think it was as great, great of a coach as he is defensively. A lot of those Super Bowls uh, in, the, in the early years, it was defense-related mostly. A lot of the success, was, for, uh, I think, is more Tom Brady than Bill Belichick. And then their star defense player, Judon, is out. Who knows if he'll be back this year. I'll go with the Patriots, though. To beat the Saints at home, I'll go with 20-13. to They win by 7 at home and get a much-needed win. 1 o'clock on CBS, my wife Steelers uh, at home against the Baltimore Ravens. They always play well in a smash mouth. AFC North Division rivalry against the Baltimore Ravens. But they're just struggling so much on offense. Everyone's saying fire my, uh, Matt Canada on offense. And uh, the offensive coordinator who's been struggling. And Kenny Pickett, thought, luckily he didn't tear anything. They said it was bone-on-bone bone, bruise. He's going to play. He's practicing. But he's banged up. And the Ravens defense is going to work hard and really attack him. So he's played much better at home. Lamar Jackson has been up and down, and the Ravens' offense has been up and down this year, but I just feel this will be a close game. Justin Tucker, who's a great, accurate kicker from long distance, I think will score a late field goal. As much as I'm rooting for the Steelers secretly, I'm wearing my Pittsburgh uh, Pirates uh, City Connect shirt that my brother gave me with the black and gold colors like the Steelers and the Pirates and the Penguins all have. Um, I'm going to go with the Ravens here. I'm going to say it's going to be an ugly game. Ravens are going to win 23-20 to on the last second. Justin Tucker feel a little bit, you know, I wish the Steelers would win, but they just came off a bad loss to, on the road to the Texans. And the Ravens, I think, will win 23-20 to against the Steelers. Steelers are going to have to bounce back after that. 405 on Fox. The Bengals, with Joe Burrow, have been struggling at the Arizona Cardinals. I think that's the perfect recipe. The Bengals beat up on the stinky Arizona Cardinals, who beat the Cowboys two weeks ago. But the Cardinals, with Joshua Dobbs, James Conner, the former Steelers, they'll do their best. Who knows if Kyler Murray will ever come back this year with the knee injury? He might. Not until the end of the year. 
I think on the road against a, ba a bad Cardinals team, this is the perfect spot for Joe Burrow and the Bengals to start to play a little bit better and get healthier, even though the Bengals still might not be the, the tough team that they have in the last couple of years, going to the Super Bowl and going to the AFC Championship game. But at least this week against the Cardinals, I think the Bengals will do well. I'm going to go with the Bengals to beat the Cardinals. I'll go with 27 to 17. They win by 10 on the road in Arizona, 405 on Fox. The Philadelphia Eagles. E A G L E S Eagles fly, Eagles fly on the road to victory. E A G L E S Eagles will stay undefeated. Go on the road to LA against the LA Rams. Rams playing better. Matthew Stafford and the Rams and some of their young receivers are playing pretty well. And Sean McVay, a great offensive mind, but I think the Eagles will find a way to knock off the two and two Rams. Eagles will stay undefeated. They they almost lost to Washington last week, but they scored late to come back and they won on a winning field goal by uh, the, the, by their clutch kicker. Um, it was a Jake Elliott, big 54-yard field goal in overtime. So they stayed undefeated. It's not always looked pretty. But Jalen Hurts with the quarterback sneak and Jason Kelsey. Watch that documentary on Amazon Prime. They'll do their uh, best. I think the Rams will work them hard. But I think the Eagles will go on the road, beat the LA Rams, prove to 5-0. I'm going to go with... I'll go with 27 to 20. They win by a touchdown over the Rams. We'll be 5 0. And we're going to the next week's game on my wife's birthday. On so now, October 15th, uh, it will be Eagles 425 at the New York Jets. They got the tickets when they saw Aaron Rodgers was going to play. Um, but I found out about that as a surprise, one of my surprise birthday presents. And we also got to go to the Phillies Mets game, last game of the season, uh, regular season on October 1st. That was fun at City Field, beautiful stadium. And we'll get to see the Eagles. I think they'll be undefeated 5-0 against the Jets going into that game. But yeah, Eagles 27-20 over the LA Rams. And then I'll go with, say, undefeated. And then 425 on CBS. Uh, cause these, there's four of these late afternoon games over the 4 o'clock games. 425 on CBS, the Jets at the Broncos. I might be drinking Kool-Aid, but I'm going to go with my J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 Jets. I know he's never really done in his career, but Jack, Zach Wilson played actually pretty well. First quarterback ever to outplay Pat Mahomes in his whole career, whether it be high school, college, or the NFL. Let's see if we can do two games in a row. I think as long as they uh, they loosen the reins a little bit, let him pass it downfield, get out of the pocket, run around. Brees Hall, they said they're going to let him uh, carry the workload a lot, running the ball, and Dalvin Cook. They won't limit Brees Hall coming off the knee injury last year. So the Jets' defense is terrific. They shut down Kansas City Chiefs. So that's where they were down 17 nothing early and almost came back to beat them. Uh, and then, you know, Z Zach Wilson played great through, uh, late in that game, but then had that costly turnover, the fumble, and some of those uh, last couple drives couldn't score. And then the Chiefs ran out the clock, controversial Sauce Gardner defensive penalty. Broncos are lucky they were down early, but big time, to, big lead to the Bron uh, to the Bears. But the Bears stink, so the Bears blew the game. So the Broncos finally got a win under Sean Payton's era with as head coach with Russell Wilson. But Russell Wilson's been mediocre. The Broncos defense has not been great. They've given up a lot of points. At home in the mile high air, you would give the Broncos a chance, but I'm going to think that this is a spot. Hopefully, I'm not uh, going crazy. The Jets with their strong defense, Zach Wilson doing just enough offensively. I think. Uh, Hopefully we'll play a good game the second week in a row. The Jets will find a way to win their first game since opening night when they came back to win overtime after the Aaron Rodgers horrific injury. I'm going to say it's not going to be pretty. I'm going to go with the Jets to beat the Broncos 23-17. to They win by six points, and they prove to two and three. And hallelujah, hallelujah, they finally win another game. And Aaron Rodgers, whether he's crazy or delusional or on the ayahuasca, who knows? He claims he might be back before the season's over, the experimental surgery he had on his Achille blown Achilles. We'll see what happens. But hopefully Zach Wilson keeps playing well. Brees Hall does well running the ball, and the defense is strong against Russell Wilson and a mediocre Broncos team that's been pretty bad under Sean Payton with all the fanfare. And Nathaniel Hackett. A circle that game against the Broncos. Sean Payton calling them out and, and teasing him out of his failed attempt to be a head coach last year. In the first year, he got fired before the season was out. So Nathaniel Hackett will have an axe to grind to beat up the Broncos. But I'm going to go with the Broncos. Jets to beat the Broncos. 23-17. Jets get the big win. 425 on CBS. The Chiefs at the Vikings. Vikings finally got a win last week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As much as I like Kirk Cousins for that quarterback documentary on Netflix, I definitely recommend that. They're at home. Chiefs can't overlook them, but I'm still going to go with the Chiefs here. The Vikings have been struggling. They barely beat a bad Carolina Panthers team last uh, last week to get their first win of the year. They're 1-3. and three. Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins of the Vikings, still a strong offense, but very inconsistent. At home in Minnesota, you never know, but I think Pat Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, who knows if K uh, Taylor Swift can come to this game, though, of her nonstop. It's too much. As much as it's fun at first, it's just too much showing her every five seconds uh, with the scoreboard and the Jumbotron and the telecast on NBC on Sunday Night Football is ridiculous, but... 
the Chiefs with all their offensive firepower, Andy Reid at uh, the helm as coach, Pat Mahomes with all the you know, offensive weapons he has, I think it's too much for the Vikings. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. To beat the Vikings, I'll go with 30-20. to 20. They win by 10. Chiefs continue to roll. The Vikings continue to struggle 1-4, and four, and who knows what happens there. You know, the head coach could be on hot seat. Kirk Cousins could be done after this season with the Vikings go elsewhere. We'll see. Even at the trade deadline, we'll see if the Vikings unload them. All right, then 8.20 p.m. on NBC and Peacock Sunday Football could be the matchup of the year. Big time showdown. Cowboys at the 49ers. Old school rivalry. Big time showdown from the 90s. Great Super Bowl team, winning teams. Uh, I'm going to go with the 49ers here. The Cowboys, strong defense. Mika Parsons, Dak Prescott turns a little ball. At times, it looks lost up there. But they have the firepower. C.D. Lamb and company. Tony Pollard. They have lots of offensive weapons. 49ers, I know they have want revenge against the Niners. 49ers have ended their season the last two years in a row in the playoffs, but Brock Purdy's not lost the game in the regular season. He's solid offensively. Bosa on defense has been top-notch. McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, he scores a touchdown every single game, broke a record last week. Uh, Debo Samuel, all the offensive firepower. Ayuk at receiver. I think it's too much for the 49ers. I think the Cowboys give them a battle early, keep it close. <laughs> and then I think the <laughs> 49ers pull away late. I'm going to go with the 49ers over the Cowboys, 27 to 23. They win by four points over the Cowboys. 49ers stay undefeated. Cowboys get their second loss of the year, but it could be the matchup of the season on Sunday football in primetime. That should be fun. Last but not least, on Monday, October 9th, ABC ESPN, Monday Night Football, 8.15 p.m., and also the the man in uh, simulcast, the Eli and Payne Man. It's always a fun time. Packers, Green Bay Packers at the Vegas Raiders in Vegas, and it's uh, Devontae Adams gets to face his former team, the Packers, but not in Lam- Lambeau Field, but in, in uh, Vegas. Jim Garoppolo got banged up last week. He didn't play. Packers, Jordan Love has been up and down so far. They had a big comeback win against the Saints when they looked they were going to lose two weeks ago and they came back and won. But then on Thursday Night Football last week, they got destroyed by their rival, the Detroit Lions, who they used to always beat up on, and now the Lions beat, the, uh, beat up on the Packers. They've turned the tables. This is a tough one. I'm going to go with... I'm actually going to go with the Packers here. To go into Vegas, Jordan Love will play decent, especially if Garoppolo can't play and he's not healthy. He's been banged up and he's unfortunately can't stay healthy, can't rely on him. It's almost like uh, glass out there, how fragile he is. I know Devontae Adams can take over a game. He wants to show up his former team, the Packers. I think the Packers will do enough, and I think they'll beat the Raiders. I'll go with 23-20. to 20. They win late by a field goal. Packers 23-20 over the Raiders on Monday Night Football. So, again, my picks, including tonight with Thursday Night Football, I'm going to go with Washington over the winless Bears. Uh, I'm going to go with Bills over the Jaguars. Texans over the Falcons. Lions over the Panthers, Big Lee. Titans over the Colts. Dolphins crush the Giants, who stink. Patriots over the Saints. Ravens close one of the Steelers. You know, I hope I'm wrong. For my, 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 hope I'm wrong for my wife's Steelers' sake, and hopefully I'm not sleeping on the couch. But I go with the Ravens division rivalry close of the Steelers. Bengals crush the Arizona Cardinals, and they've been struggling. with The Bengals, uh, Eagles beat up on the LA Rams. Jets finally, Jets, 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 Jets beat the Broncos. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Hopefully, they get it done. Uh, Chiefs over the Vikings. 49ers over the Cowboys close on Sunday football could be the game of the year. And Packers close over the Raiders on Monday Night Football. Those are our picks. And then there's four teams. Finally, first week of bye weeks. Four teams are off this week. The Bre- Cleveland Browns are off. So Deshaun Watson hopefully will heal up. He can play the next game. He was going to play. And the coach kind of threw him on the bus. Said he didn't want to play or didn't think he was able to. Browns are off. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are off. after being the Saints last week. The Chargers are off with Justin Herbert and company. They've been struggling of late. And the Seattle Seahawks have to question the Giants on Monday Night Football uh, are off. So Browns, uh, Buc- Tampa Bay Buccaneers. LA Chargers and Seattle Seahawks all have their bye weeks early in the season. Those are the first four teams at bye weeks. Everyone else is playing, including another London game. So it'll be football tonight, Thursday night football, morning football uh, with Jaguars and Bills in London, all the way till Sunday night football is over with the 49ers Cowboys. Great matchup. So take two and come in the morning. This is not the Duma and things that nature. Has la vista, baby. Jamie, the turbo man. <laughs> and see, it's for Cookie. That's good enough for me. Ah, Cookie, 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 starts to see. Ah, Cookie, 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 starts to see. Cookie Monster and all sorts are mixed together. Those are my picks. Love to hear you agree, disagree. Love to hear you uh, hear from you with my baseball playoff picks. Phillies over the Orioles in six games to win the World Series. First World Series title in 15 years. Rematch of the World Series in 83 when my brother was born 40 years ago. Um... On my football picks in the NFL uh, for week five, it's flying right by. And basketball hockey coming back before you know it. Mo- the writer strike's over. Hopefully the action strike will be over soon. So mo- a lot of movies coming out. Going to take the kids to see the new Paw Patrol movie this weekend. They're excited to see that. New Saw movie came out. The new Exorcist movie, 50 year, se- uh, 50 year wait for the sequel comes out this week. And then the Taylor Swift concert movie the following week on the Friday the 13th. 
Plus, Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro have a big-time movie coming up on October 20th. That looks like a, a terrific movie. So a lot of big movies coming out. The Meg 2 is on HBO Max. The Kelsey documentary on uh, Amazon. Uh, so, so many uh, just different things you can watch. Movies and shows. I'm going to watch Fast X on Peacock. Watch that. Ambulance on Peacock was good. If you want to watch the the old uh, reality show uh, Catching Kelsey on the Peacock, all seven episodes as well. Uh, let me wrap up the song. We sing a uh, song to my beautiful wife, Abby. Love you all my heart. Lorelai, beautiful daughter. I got to get her from dance class now. And LJ, my beautiful son. I'm going to sing. That's Rick Rolling like they did on my birthday at the uh, the Mets Phillies game at City uh, City Field in New York. They were gonna play Piano Man from uh, Billy Joel, just slightly over Taylor Swift. They uh, picked that song, and then all of a sudden they whipped out Rick Roll, the the online meme sensation. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna make you cry. Man, never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. Never to give, give you up. Never to give, give you up. Love you, Abby. Love you, Laura. And love you, Aldred. Lula had a picture day. Hopefully that went well. We uh, had our first scrimmage over the weekend with Luzerne County Community College. We keep getting better with that. Hopefully we'll get uh, better and we uh, keep improving each and every week with co our college baseball season. Penn State's Grand Athletics will be covering. And then I have a high school football game. Berwick Bulldogs, who are 2-4 and four against the undefeated 6-0 Dallas Mountaineers, trying to stay undefeated at 7-0. Cover that game after baseball practice tomorrow and try to look to go 7-0. So we will covering that game Friday Night Lights, uh, Week 7 of the high school football season, flying right by uh, at Dallas. Home, a home game, which is close to two minutes from, from my house, so very convenient. So keep it locked to the DJ Ross Sports Show. Your home for all your favorite sports and entertainment talk right here on DJ Ross Sports Show. Enjoy the playoff baseball. Enjoy the football. Enjoy the uh, basketball hockey coming back before you know it. And keep it locked. DJ Ross Sports Show. Your home for all your favorite sports and entertainment talk right here. DJ Ross Sports Show. Have a great week, everyone. Enjoy fall. Enjoy October. And get ready for Halloween. Spooky, spooky Halloween season. And keep it locked. DJ Ross Sports Show. Your home for all your favorite sports and entertainment talk right here. Have a great weekend, everyone. And bye-bye.